Hi guys, my name is Joshi Vibe, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to implement an email confirmation for a user registration account and also how to handle password reset in a situation whereby a user wants to reset his or her password, um, which also requires you to send some kind of token and a link that will trigger the user to be able to change the password. These are the two functionalities that I'm going to implement in this code. We are going to handle the intricacies and all the logic and different procedures of getting this achieved in a Django powered web application. Without wasting your time, let's begin coding. Um, I don't want to make this video long, so let's quickly start coding because I want to make it as short as possible. So I have already set up the login system and also the sign up system. I'm also going to drop in the description the links of previous videos. We have captured how to set up a sign up system and also a login system in Django website so that if you look at all those resources available, you can look at them and see how you can set up your sign up and login system in a Django website. Now with that being understood, let's begin the purpose and also the main focus of this video which is to implement in our sign up and email confirmation before letting a user to be active. So this is the normal sign up we have. I'm going to make changes to this sign up to capture that. First of all, um, what are the things we are going to change inside this sign up function to be able to capture that? We are going to start from the if here where we have the if form that is valid instead of it returning the user dot form dot save we are going to make some changes here so that it will not quickly save a user immediately the form is valid rather we will set the user dot is active to be false because immediately you set the user to be user equal to form dot save and you call on the order login that means you have automatically created the user inside your database now let's start making changes one of the changes i'm going to make to this is to set this our sign up to be able not to save an email that is already registered in our account so let me start with this then i will now change this if statement to capture the user that is not active then also add other functionalities that we we'll use to be able to send an email once a user is confirmed to have a valid email that is not inside our database so first what i'm going to do is email equal to form dot clean data so inside this dot we'll set it to be dot get so we can get the email when we get the email we'll first of all check if the email is already registered so what we'll do is if user dot object dot filter then we'll set email equals to email dot exist okay we'll call on the exist function once we call on the exist function we'll then return a messages dot error dot error request comma then this email is already registered please use a different email okay so next what i'm now going to do is inside here we'll now carry this our user that here we're going to now set this to be for else i'm going to change the way we are handling it in that regard so let me set else here else now inside this we'll get this user here instead of committing it to be true we'll now set commit to be equals to false meaning that it will not be saved next we will now get user dot is active equals to false after this we then do user Dot save. After this, we are going to now remove this other login because we are not going to log in a user that is not activated. In fact, the account will not exist. So let's remove this other login. We don't need it. Now, what I'm going to set here is a function for our activate email. We'll do request again, comma, user, comma, then email. What we're going to do next is to now bring this messages the success we have here. So we are calling a new account created user. Dot. Let me remove this, but rather instead of having this, we'll say, please check your email to activate your account this activate email is a function we are going to create this function shortly and also create another function that will work with this activate function then let's return the redirect this one looks good then form dot okay now this function we need to set it up that is why it's showing this error because the function is not yet defined so I'm going to set this up let me um, keep it up here let's create dev activate email so inside here we'll have the request as usual user then to email okay i have already imported all these libraries that we are using the libraries are currently imported here so always remember the code will be available for you inside uh, my github you can copy it and use it to build yours and make changes to it 
all these libraries here they have their own different purpose and as i'm creating the function you'll be seeing me calling them and using them in different places don't be surprised when you see me calling some functions that are default to some of the libraries that we have imported here so with that being understood let's continue setting up the activate email the activate email function is the function that is going to help us to send email to a user once their email has been validated and we want them to confirm that the email is theirs to be able to activate the account so this activate email is what is going to send this email to the user so the first thing we want to do is to set contest inside the contest we're going to set it to be equals to one we'll get the user inside the user i will set it to be equals to user comma then We'll set for the domain. To get the domain, we'll use the get underscore current site, which is a, a, a function from one of the libraries we have imported. Now we set request comma inside here. We will now do dot domain. This will help us to get our domain comma. The next is the user ID. Inside the user ID, we'll get the URL save base64 encode. No, not the code. We are doing a code for now. We are still going to use the decode later. Then we set for the first byte. First byte. Then inside the first byte, we will set user.pk. So what is first byte? First byte is a callable function within the Django Utils encoding model. So that's what we are using here to control our catch and all that. So we are getting the user the primary key. Next, let's um, also set for the token that will enable the user to be able to change the password. So we're going to create a special token. This special token is um, a token that will enable the user to be able to authenticate and also change his or her username. So that's the purpose of the token um, we are setting inside our contest. Now we are also going to create a separate function for that. Normally there are different ways to do this. You can use the default token generator of Django. But I decided to create my own. I'm going to create a special function for that. And uh, inside that function, that's what we are setting up. I call the function account underscore activation underscore token. So that's the function we are calling here. Then we call dot make token, which is to make it to make token now inside it we assign it to the user the next thing we're going to do is the protocol the protocol is what is going to help us to get the http we set if request that is underscore secure call on the is secure function then else http now we see this function we have to create it before we continue let me quickly create um, another file inside our call app i'm going to call it tokens.py close this so inside here we'll do from django.contrib.auth.tokens import password reset token generator next we'll create a class inside the class we'll call it token generator inside here we'll call on the password reset token generator now inside this our class we'll set a function to make hash so we'll call it make hash value we set self then user then timestamp now inside this function we'll return string user.pk then plus another string and timestamp this is what we are going to use to generate the token that will be used inside our http link to enable the user change his or her password we we'll get another string we set it to user dot we add t and this one to string we we'll come down here we we'll call on the account underscore activation underscore token equals to we we'll set it to the token generator this function is ready now let's go back to close this now let's come down here let me import the function we just created so we we'll import it from dot token import count activation token now let's continue setting up the activate email now that we have set the contest so let's set the email content inside the email content we render it to be string we will then call on the call slash the account active email that we are going to send let me show you guys the template i have, I have set that up this this is the template that will be sent to the user you see the way i set it up for the email confirmation this is the http link that the user will get so that is what we are setting up here so that's why we are calling it we are rendering it as a string because it's a html i want to render it as a string inside our email so account underscore activate but i set it as active rather I change just to be activate comma then plus the contest we set so the contest will enable us get the user get the domain get the user id then the token and also the protocol now let's go ahead to send the email using the custom template the first thing i'm going to do 
is to set our email subject inside the email subject i'm going to set it as activate your account string okay we'll get the recipient list now set it to be to email next we'll get the from underscore email because to i'm going to set this to let's use our phones it's not even a normal email so it's just a dummy email now from this setup the next thing i'm going to do is to set our success the success will set it to be because to we are going to use the send mail function of let me show you guys from the django email server so inside core email of django we have send mail there is also email message there are different ways you can send email using the django core mail um, function so i'm using the send mail function for this particular email so that's what i'm calling here once i call the function i will set the, the email subject that we have set on top comma the next thing i'm going to set is an empty string for the message since we are rendering it as an html from the template then we'll get it from the email comma then i'm also going to send the recipient list comma then html message we set this to the cost to the email content then fail silently silently we set this to the false okay there should be a comma here okay so inside here now we'll now do if success is greater than zero anything that is greater than zero is one or any number so we'll set the messages dot success so that we'll be able to know that the email has been sent we'll set our request inside the request we'll go ahead and set a formatted string so i'm going to set this to be there side here we'll put user please go to your email email come on if the email fails let's set for that as well we'll send a messages dot error inside the messages dot error we'll also get the request so that we'll also show the person that okay now this function is ready the next function we're going to set is for the activate function let me also put it above the activate email so we'll call on the activate function inside the activate function we are going to call on request inside the request we'll set user id b64 okay we are going to import this i've already imported that and the token we set inside this function we'll set user equals to auth.get user model once we do this we use try and accept inside this try and accept we will set the user id user id will set it to be equals to user dot object dot get then we'll set primary key equals to user id now this is object and not object the next thing i'm going to set inside this try is to get the user that object oops i did a mistake this one should be for the user that i'm calling there Call this off let's put it here now let's set for the user id for the user id to get it we're also going to use first um, string this time around instead of the normal first byte then we'll set our url save base 64 decode this time instead of encode then we'll get uid 64b uid b 64 not 64b next let's set for our accept inside the accept we're going to set our user to be equals to none let's control this with an if statement if user is not none and account activation token dot check token okay then we'll get the user from our token now inside this our if here what we're going to do is to set the user dot is active equals to true that means this guy has currently verified his account because if it is not none that means actually a user we'll go ahead to set the user dot is active to be true then we'll go ahead and save the user user save okay next we'll return the messages that success inside the messages that success we'll get to request comma then thank you for your email confirmation now you can log we'll go ahead and return a redirect redirect let's redirect to login else messages dot error division link invalid now this is going to control once you have already used the activation link you cannot use it again automatically be rendered useless now inside our settings i also set this uh, password reset timer to 14 400 which is i think is four hours that's how long the reset um, link will stay before it becomes um, useless or expire all right so let's go back to views remember the code will be available in my github you can use it and make adjustments to yours so thereafter here what we're gonna do is return another redirect which will take us back to our home all right everything looks good i don't think there's any error in this our function looks good and um we have almost used everything we need here the remaining ones will be for the password reset that we are going to do once this one is working now let's save this our code here go back to our urs to set up our activate I have already set up the ones for the sign up login and logout we now need to add the activate to be able to see if it's working so what i'm going to do is duplicate it here then for this one what we're going to do is change this to be activate slash we'll get the uid 64 then we'll close it slash open up another one 
for our token change this one to be activate change this to be activate as well okay save now inside our template let's look at what we have there are this is the only one we are using these ones are the ones i'm going to use for the password reset that are already set up so we're going to come to the function that's going to use all these templates here the only one we are using for the sign up login is this one you're seeing here the account active email which is the email that's going to be sent to a user once a user creates an account now the sign up is already set up because i have done previous videos there so i do not bother showing you guys that uh, function from the onset all i just did was to make changes to the sign up now inside the sign up you remember we set up an email this is the email the email was set up as a template so we are rendering everything and for you to render it as a template you have to set up both the css and also the html in one file all i did was to set up the css as an inline css as you can see we yeah, have my style and everything here then i went ahead to set up the div that will contain the email confirmation and the link so this is all i did for here now with this setup let me also show you something in my base so you'll see inside the base which is the um header and also our footer I think there's some way I added the messages that is helping us to be able to get um, messages inside our yeah I did an include here so this include here is what is helping us to get the messages whether it is error message or success messages coming from our form or from our code so we are going to see it inside our template so that's the purpose of this if messages for messages that you're seeing here remember the code will be available on github you can have it look at it study it and use it to make adjustments to yours so with this setup ready now let's try to create an account and see if it's working remember also that i set up the email server here this is the email server that is using sandbox.stmp i'm using the mail trap to test run this and i'm going to check if the email was sent in fact our function is going to tell us if it was successful then we'll check inside our email trap bus to see if there was any email so with that being understood let's go back to here now let's refresh this okay now let's go to sign up okay before we even sign up because we also have to check inside our admin to make sure that an account has been created so let me quickly create a super user Python manager py create super user so let's use let me bring this up so you can see it let's use joshi vibe email let's use j at gmail.com okay now with this setup let's run our server again to try and sign up from our template to see if it's working let's refresh this now let me try to sign up with joshi as as username let's use joe let's also use praise then let's use joe at gmail.com then include the password again enter okay something is wrong let's try to fix the problem so we are getting this error type error sign up bad operanda type of dict okay from our line 30 sorry 55 close this let's go to our views line 55 what's wrong in line 55 what do we have okay this plus we don't need it here go back let's refresh let's see okay a user with that username already exists so that means let me quickly check my email let's go to mail trap and see see what we have in our mail trap email okay so the email did not come true but because of the error we encountered the account was open but i was expecting to receive the email confirmation the email reset so but let's try to open with this let's do joshua one still use the same name okay let's try to still use joe so we can use it to test run if the if statement will set up to confirm and also restrict a user using um, an email that is already opened is working so let's try okay this email is already registered please use a different email okay so it's working so let's go ahead and now use a different email let's still maintain the job use double e 
okay let's do our password okay the address you want please go to your email joe at gmail.com inbox and click on the receive attentive activation link to confirm and complete the registration note to check your spam folder new account created okay let's refresh this okay as you can see we got the email this is the email here email confirmation hey just you want please click on the link to confirm your registration let's go ahead and click on this link to confirm our registration we'll click on it okay thank you for your email confirmation now you can log in so i think we use joshua right now let's try to log into this account okay hello joshua you have been logged in now let me log out and try to log in with the other account that we created that we did not receive email and see what will happen so we use Joshi for that one. Let's try to log it in. You will see what it will come up with. Enter. This account is inactive. You see, you are not able to log in because the account is inactive because there was no email sent to us to verify. So our setup for email confirmation is working. Now let me quickly go to admin so we can delete the other account that is active. Again, okay. let's look at our users here. Okay, you see, all the active accounts are showing. Let me delete Josh since it's not activated and we did not receive any email for that. Okay, deleted. All right, so now with this setup, um, I think everything is looking good. But let me quickly, I think there was, we yeah, saw one error here inside this hour. Okay, there should be space here. Let's go back to our views. There should be space here. Save. I know if we refresh this, we will not see it again, but it's all good, so at least. Now, let's also go back. Let's click on this link. Activation link is invalid because it has been validated and we have already used it. So we cannot change it or try to use it again once we have currently used it. So I think um, I'm done with this setup. Let me log this out. This setup is um, good to go. You now know how to set up yours to work for you. Now, the next thing we're going to do is to set up for forget password um, so that we can be able to reset our password which also require to send us a token that will help us to change our password in a situation whereby we forget our password now we, we are in login right so let's go to login here so when you forget your password forget your password you can quickly enter your email and we'll reset it for you so let's go back if you have an account to reset let's go back to our function here since we are done with this one, let me quickly close this so we can have space. Okay. Close this too. Close this. Close the login. We are not going to touch anything inside all these ones. Okay. First thing first, let's quickly also set up the email that we are going to send in a case whereby somebody wants to reset the account. So I'm going to set up the function that's going to send the custom email that's going to help us to do that because um, we are going to override some things in the custom way of doing this in Django so that we'll be able to send this email and um, also use our own template to capture this scenario so I'm going to call the function send custom password um, reset okay now inside this function I'm going to call on user then user ID again we'll call on the token as usual because we need that also call on protocol comma then domain now inside is our function here send custom password reset email so we're going to set subject inside the subject we're going to set it to be password reset now from email we'll set it to be forms at limited.com then to email set it to user uh, email all right then we'll set our contest inside the contest we'll get name name we'll set name to be user so what i'm gonna do is let's put this here so we can make it look better then we'll also set the user id inside the user id we'll set it to be equal to uid then we'll also set for the token then we'll also set for protocol side protocol we'll set it to be equal to protocol and um, finally we'll set for the domain side here we'll set it to be equal to domain now with this setup the next thing i'm going to do is set the HTML content since we are sending the email as a template HTML content set it to render to string inside the render to string 
to set it to be call slash password reset email html send this to be contest the next thing we're now going to do is to set message let's set message to be equals to send mail let's still use the send mail we used before inside here we'll set subject comma then we'll also set the html content comma then we'll send we'll set from email lastly we'll set the to email all right so what we're not gonna do next is to let's look at the other one we did for the activate email content okay let's look at it and see contest then the email content we set it to set this one to be html underscore message equals to this changes to be email content so i can change this to be email content then we'll also set the empty if i want to leave it this way i think this should come let's cut this off let's put it here so we can then comma comma then we we'll set the to email now with this function out of the way let's go and start setting up the custom reset function that we are going to use to send the reset to a user so the first one i'm going to do is to set up the class custom password reset class custom okay before we continue we need to import the custom password reset i think i have already imported it this is a here from django.contrib.ort.views import password reset view and password reset confirm view so that's what we are going to use inside is our custom password reset view because custom inside this place we're going to call on password reset view okay now inside here what i'm going to do is to get our template name template inside the template name we'll set it to be call slash password underscore reset underscore form dot html we're also going to get the email template name now inside it will set the call slash password underscore reset then underscore email dot html this is the one that's gonna get the email content let me show you guys the template is already set up the password reset email template this is it the same way we set up the one we did for activate account email that's the same way i did for the password reset so yeah so let me close it and continue working on the views so that's what we are setting up here we are trying to override the password reset view of django to make changes to it so that we can be able to set our own template so that's why i'm setting the email template name there the first one i'm going to create inside these views is called the form valid to validate the form then i'm going to set it to be self then form and inside this function i'm going to set response equals to i'm going to get super dot form underscore valid do not i will call on form now the next thing i'm going to do is to get a first user from the generator so i'm going to call on users inside the users i'm going to set it to be a list inside the list i will get form dot get users so we can get our users when we get our users we will then use form dot cleaned underscore data to get the email of the one that wants to reset their password now this is meant to be a list because we are actually calling on a list if you remember and not this is not date this is data form underscore data okay so inside this i'll set this as a list because we are getting um, users in our account get it as a list now inside this our list here let me close this okay once we get that email we will then set the user equals to users zero which is the email we are getting then we we'll set if users else then under here what i'm going to do is set another if statement if user then pass the correct values for the uid b64 and also the token so I'm going to set UID 64 here and I'm going to call on the URL save base. We'll set the first byte. Um, inside the first byte, we'll get the user primary key. Thereafter, the next thing we're going to do is to now set for the token. But we are going to use the default token generator. I'm not going to set up any function separate for this. Then dot make underscore token. Inside here, we'll set it for the user. After this, we'll now set the protocol based on whether the request is secure, which is HTTPS or not which is http now to do that i'm going to call on protocols inside protocols i'm going to set https if self dot request dot is secure you remember we do this when we were doing the one for email um, confirmation validation so we're also setting it up for the one for 
our password reset. What I'm gonna now do is to now construct the reset link. And to construct the reset link, you know we set up that email function that have constructed our reset link. The email function we set up here for our send custom password reset. Inside the email, we know we set the user ID, token protocol, domain, everything inside this contest. And we have sent it as an email. So inside this thing is where we are getting all those details. So to construct the reset link, what I'm going to do is to call that function directly and I will call the send custom password reset email and inside it, I will set user, then the UIDB64, then also token, comma, then also protocol, comma, then dummy, equal to, we we'll set it to be self dot request dot get, this one is protocol and not protocols. Thereafter, when we set this, we'll go ahead and return response. Now. I think the function is looking all good. Now, the next function I'm going to create is for the custom password reset confirm view. This is the one that's going to help us to confirm the password has been reset successfully. So to do that, I'm also going to construct it. Let me set another class here. Inside this class, I'm going to call it to be custom password reset. We'll call on password reset confirm view. Okay. Once we call on the function, we'll go ahead to also set the template name template name we'll set it to be equals to call password underscore reset let me show you guys this one the template is already set up password reset confirm okay so this is the template to reset your password now let's continue working on the views now the next function i'm going to set up is the the get contest function the contest data to get the contest data function so i'm going to call it get contest underscore data so then we'll get quags inside this function we'll first of all get the contest set the contest to be super dot get underscore contest data then we'll set the quags again all right the next we'll also get the contest for our uid then we'll set it to be uidb64 to so we'll now set to self.files now inside this we'll also get the uidb64 now let me change this one to be for token i'm going to do return contest once we return the contest we'll then set the the form valid function inside it we'll set self comma then form and what I'm going to do inside this function is to do form.save and we'll go ahead to do messages messages dot success and we'll do self dot request your yeah, password has been reset successfully so what this particular function is doing for us is that when we pull up the email and the email comes with the UID the token and everything this function is going to help us to confirm that all those details that we are pulling up are valid if it confirms that the details are valid it will go ahead to save the new password we imputed inside the form and the password reset is successful so this is the end of the whole thing if you're able to put through and follow the instructions based on the way we are writing the function so now as we have returned this message we do return super dot form valid the next thing we are going to do now is to set up our urls Another thing I'm going to import here is the auth views. So I'm going to use django.contrib.auth because there are some templates I need to set that doesn't need me to create any function but rather set them directly inside the URS. All I just need to do is to set the templates I want them to use to be able to return the intended message. So that's why I'm importing the django.contrib.auth to enable us to do that. Now with this importation, I'm going to now set up for the password reset. To set up our URS for password reset, okay, let me quickly copy this. So we'll just make changes to it. So what I'm going to do inside this one, let's remove all this here. Inside this, what I'm going to do is to set this to be password reset slash. I'm going to change this to be custom password reset view. Let me change the name here to be password reset. Close down this password reset. Copy this so we can use it to set for the confirm. We we'll have to make changes here. Set this to be reset um, slash. Then we'll set the UID the way we we'll set it up here. UID B64. Okay close it set one for the token to remove this this should be custom reset confirm view then change the name here to be password reset confirm okay now let's use this um, auth views we imported let me also duplicate this for this one what we're going to do is have inside here we're going to set for the password reset done password reset reset to be done instead of having this one because we have to use the default and set the template directly from here i'll now call on the auth views password reset done v then call it dot as 
view okay now with this setup i will not be able to set up the template name template was to we'll set it to the core slash password let me bring this down here set this to be password underscore reset underscore done or html now inside the name here what i'm going to do for the name is to set this to be done remove the confirm that i kept there okay copy this duplicate let's also do the one for the password reset complete so here i'm going to change this to be password reset complete now the same way i imported this i'm going to change this to be password reset complete view as view then also set the template to be password reset complete the html changes to be password reset complete save cross check and make sure it's looking good so that you know what instead of using dash here let me use a underscore the normal one all right so let me save this let me look at the templates we have set up to make sure let's look at the i've shown you guys the password reset complete okay this is the way it looks this is what it will return if everything is successful your password has been successfully changed login with your new password you can now all right so about the way i'm setting it up here the way i did it before i handled it in such a way whereby i even set up the password reset but looking at the views the way i handle the views here i realize that i have set up the subject for the email and also the template inside the functions that i'm calling directly here so i expect it to be able to work that way but if it doesn't work that way then we'll come back and make adjustment now the reset to let me show you the password reset done so if you have an account okay this one is the one that's going to show you that the reset has been sent so if you have an account with us you will receive an email of instructions on how to you reset your what i can do is to pull break here pull break now let's see if our server is currently running your url pattern password reset has an invalid view let's look at the urs what i'm gonna do is inside this place we'll have to call the dot as view call it here also do the same for here dot as view remember it's a class so that's why i'm calling it that way all right so let's go back to our browser refresh this now let's try to go to forget password okay i have to add this there i have not added it so let's go to our login inside the login here we're gonna add password reset url password reset form let's look at the way we handled it inside our password reset okay i think i can do it as just password reset let's try this first go back refresh now let's click on forget password okay enter your email address below i will send you a link to reset your password okay so which email did we use i think i i have an account okay let's quickly go to our admin inside so that we'll know the account we have i need to look at the email to make sure so put login now inside users how many account we have joe okay so double e gmail.com now let's come here and put that email joe double e okay well because i logged in into the admin i'm currently logged in as a user so i have to lock that up so that I will not be conflicting okay now let's put joe at gmail.com send reset link csrl verification field what is our Okay, let me even see if we got any email. Okay, we are still filling. So let me input the email. Joe. Okay. Type error. To argument must be a list. So this is the error we are getting. So where is the error coming from? Let's look at the line where we are getting the error. I think it has to do with something from the email. Yeah, from here. Let's first of all, let's go back to our views. The one I'm sending is email, I think is the problem. Let's start with this one. I was handling it wrong here. Correct this, save. Let's go back, refresh this, and see which other error we'll get next. We are still getting the same error. Okay, but we're actually getting uh, the email. But because of the way I'm handling it, we are having an error. I think I actually know why we are having this error because the way I handled the email, I feel like that's why I'm having the error. But I'm trying to figure out if I can maneuver it because the way I handled it is not the way I did it before. I'm trying to handle it in such a way whereby I will use the send mail instead of the email message. That's what I used before. Let's go back. Let's go to 188 and see what is in our 188. From what I'm seeing, I think um, the error we are having is because of the way I'm sending the email. And um, to resolve that, so we'll not be wasting time, what I'm going to do is to use email message let's use email message 
so that inside here we'll change this to the email message now the same way we are setting for the subject i don't need this anymore then from email then the way we are setting it here what i can do is instead of having i can change this to be to email then set it to user or email so that inside here i will then use to email then below here we'll do message dot send let's refresh this again if you have an account with us, you will receive an email with instructions on how to reset your password. Please check your inbox. Okay, now let's go back here. The format is sending it is not the way I want it to be sent. I want it to be sent as a template HTML. That's because I did not set the content of the email. And one of the reasons I don't like using email messages is that it will send it as a test and also send it as the HTML content but because I did not set that inside here that's why you just sent it as a normal HTML content for both the email so what I'm gonna do is inside this place we're gonna make that below here I'm gonna add message.content we'll set this to be equals to HTML now let's go back here try to go home again again do the password reset let's put Joe okay now let's wait and see once so you can see the content of the email we sent all right so let's see okay so this is it password reset hey Joshiman, there was a request to change your password or your account at our website if you did not make this request okay so let me click on reset you see it brought this out new password let me try and impute the let me change it to let me quickly make adjustments so we can have this inside it's meant to be inside i don't even think i need this um the only reason why i needed it was so that okay but let me try one logic now open the password reset form so what i can do is i'm going to set the placeholder to have the label place we are having this password let me try it and see if it will work i've not tried this before but let's see if it will change it okay it's doing what I want it to do. I the new password one, but I want it to only bring out. Um, so what I'm going to do is to fill dot label. So let's change it to fill dot label. I think this will do the work for us. Refresh again. New password confirmation. So now with this setup, with this setup, I can remove this label that I kept here. I don't need it. Cause that's what's bringing the label. Let's just use the input the way we are using it. So refresh this now. Okay. So new password, new password confirmation. So let's try to change it to. David. Okay, let's try again. Let's try. Your password has been reset successfully. Your password has been successfully changed. You can now log in with your new pass. Okay, these are just the different information is bringing up. So I just like to show all these different errors. You are, you cannot handle yours. Don't mind me. I just like capturing different um, successes and errors. I'm using both fused or error. And also the normal messages that uh, success or messages that error from Django. That's why you're seeing all this multiple information here. So you can now click on login. Let me try to, I think it's Joshua. And I've already set it to use it as a password. So let's try to login with the new password. Okay. Hello, Joshua. You have been logged in. So as you can see, it's working. The setup is working as expected. Everything is looking good and uh, yeah so if you look at our email we got two emails one that is looking like the text html text then the normal html rendered so that's because i'm using email message email message usually does that so yeah this is how to set up email confirmation for account registration and also set up email reset for password change um remember uh everything done here is going to be available in the github the whole source code will be made available you can have access to it play around study it read it then use it and build on your own application and understand the concept of all these um, functionalities now with all this being understood please remember to subscribe to my channel if what you have learned today is useful and you are grateful for me taking all my time to teach you all these concepts i think it's not a bad thing to subscribe subscription is free subscribe like drop your comments and if there is any other thing you guys feel like you want me to do i'm available to look at it and also work on any concepts or any functionalities for you guys until we meet again i remain your humble servant and your favorite youtuber here joshy vibe please subscribe